You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident fanalist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore dat Well, we finally got some news today. Nothing uh, that we were necessarily hoping for, not, not the big bomb. But I think we got enough to play with for once. Um, I will say, though, there, the news is kind of scattered all over the place. Um, and I don't necessarily have it in a nice, neat little format. So we're probably going to be doubling back once in a while, kind of hitting the same subjects a couple different times from a couple, couple different angles. You're just going to have to bear with me on that, but everything's still relatively new and as are uh, everybody's perspectives on it and whatnot. So, um, And yeah, if you don't know what I'm referring to, uh, Brian Gutekunst did speak to the media. Aaron Rodgers did not go on the Pat McAfee show, which I was a little bit surprised about. Um he was willing to go on the show after being eliminated uh, from Super Bowl contention, but not after failing to complete his four days, apparently. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to go on and answer questions. Um, apparently, they have not even had discussions, though, which is kind of weird. I would have thought there's sort of a, you know, we, we've talked, but we haven't uh, concluded anything. We're just kind of starting to to have some conversations about things. Um, but I guess that kind of makes sense because I get the impression it's not going to be a, all right, let's open up dialogue again. It's going to be Aaron Rodgers saying, all right, look, here's what I think I'm going to do. But um, all right, let's hit on just a couple things here before we get into all the juicy meatiness, meaty juiciness, meaty goodness, juicy goodness, probably a couple other combos in there. Uh, first thing I wanted to bring up, I think is in my opinion, the most obvious thing ever, um, XFL ratings declined by 50% from week one to week two. This doesn't surprise me even slightly. I saw uh, yesterday, two days ago, whatever it was, uh, little Twitter things about so-and-so catching a touch, and it took me a while to even realize, like, oh, shoot, there must be a game on right now. I could not have cared any less. I forgot it was even a thing. And it's not surprising. People didn't watch the XFL last week because it's an awesome product. They didn't know what it was. They watched it because it's new. Same exact thing that happens every single time. The inaugural week is massive. And then after that, everybody forgets. And so it's unfortunate for the people in the XFL. I know there's a lot of guys wanting to try to make something and, you know, get a career going and everything. I have no reason to, I I have no reason to believe that there's ever going to be a a second league that's going to be successful. Why would there be? We've seen this a thousand times. I think, honestly, what it proves to me is that I don't think fans are big on football, necessarily. It's not football. It's the NFL. I have a vested interest in college football because these are the guys that are going to be populating the NFL. These are guys that are going to be future Green Bay Packers And even that can't get me to watch it. I don't care. It's not interesting to me. Why would I care about this? And I I feel like every every single time this happens, everybody tries to convince me of the opposite. No, it's going to be big. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. They've got better this. They got better. Yeah, they do. They've got better rules. They got better technology. They've got better everything. Still don't want to watch it. I mean, take all every good idea you've ever heard in your life and apply it to a peewee football team. Are you going to sit down on a Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Wednesday, whenever these things are televised? Are you going to sit down and like watch it every week because they've got cool rules and fun technology? Are you going to watch a peewee football game? No, because again, it's not the rules. It's not this. We want different rules to make the NFL better. 
We want the technology to make the NFL better. Nobody wants to watch the XFL. Nobody cares about XFL teams, XFL players, XFL coaches. I saw him kicking a field goal the other day. I was like, are they playing at an elementary? Like, what is this? There was no, you know, there's like no stands back there. They just kicked it over this little four foot high fence because they go to these tiny little stadiums because otherwise they're just going to lose money. Why would you pay for a massive stadium if only, you know, 2,000 people are going to show up or however many people go? So the XFL is, as far as I'm concerned, already dead. And I don't know why they never learn. I don't understand what they think is going to be different. Well, last time it was just COVID that killed it. No, it's not. I mean, specifically, that's the reason it didn't die on its own. But that's like shooting somebody that fell off the Empire State Building. Like, well, they didn't die because they fell off the Empire State Building. They died of, died of a gunshot wound, stupid. Okay, well, if you didn't shoot the person as they were falling, it would have been th- three seconds before they were dead without your assistance. Nobody wants to watch this. I want to want to. I think everybody wants to want to watch it, but nobody wants to watch it. It's not interesting. And here's the thing. They weren't even good ratings week one. (laughs) Week one apparently was a massive disappointment. So they they get week one, this big, you know, it's like, this is going to be huge. We got the rock. We got it. it, 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 it. I don't know what they've got that they thought was going to be different this time, but they were expecting a much bigger turnout and a much bigger viewership than 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 what they got. It was a disappointing week one. And then week two rolls around and it's half. Apparently this is the same thing that happened to the USFL last year. USFL. They had their week one ratings, week two, 57% drop. This is what happens every time. It's not going to bounce back. And the only way that this survives is if you can just continue to operate at a massive loss for years in hopes that eventually you get enough people with buy-in. Eventually you get enough people that actually want to watch this product, actually get invested in the players and everything else, but nobody's going to. And I feel like they think it's this big, awesome thing that they've got like ex-NFL players. It's not. Because I'm looking at NFL cast-offs, and I'm sorry, that doesn't give me this feeling of being like, dude, this is going to be good. It's like, that guy sucked seven years ago in the NFL. They got, what's his name, that quarterback, I forget which one he was, but he's like this superstar quarterback in the XFL, talking about how he could have made a lot more money as a backup in the NFL. Think about that for a second. So. The talent level is, just from from this one position, and it's not different in other positions, you've got starters, you've got backups, you've got third-string backups, you've got third-string hopefuls, and then you've got XFL quarterbacks, right? They're like the third-string hopefuls that don't get a shot. Like, oh, man, I guess i got to go to the XFL. And this guy could have been a third-string quarterback, maybe even a second-string quarterback, and made a bunch of money but didn't want to because his kids like watching him on TV. So he's like, all right, cool. I'm going to do that. It's a dad thing. It's not a, no other reason. So this isn't even like this, 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 there's the NFL and then there's preseason and then there's the second half of preseason and then there's the XFL. It's just, it's just, it's not interesting. And I don't know why they keep doing it. I cannot imagine the amount of money they're throwing into this. The amount of work that goes into this and all the coaches and players that buy into it. I mean, players, fine. If you have no other option, I guess try it. It's a paycheck. It's something to do. Not much of one, but it's something. But you're, you're a coach and you're going to take this job. I mean, I guess if you got nothing else to do. So I, I just I feel like this is the dumbest thing that they continue to do this over and over again. I see no path whatsoever. The only path is to do what Trump wanted to do back in the 80s with, what was it, the American Football League or whatever, where they wanted to actually compete and go out and get poached college guys. It's the only way. And he was considered an idiot and ruined the whole thing, but there is no other way. Other than just finding uber-rich people and being like, I'll pay you $10 million a year to come here and play. Well, yeah. Why not? I mean, there's a lot that'll say, you know, I I don't trust the league or whatever. It might fold. I'd rather go to the NFL. But if you're offering more money, there's going to be players that are like, yeah, dude, I'll I'll choose that path as opposed to this path. I mean, just that's that's the only way you're going to compete. Otherwise, this is a stupid, idiotic waste of everybody's time. Anyways, 
In addition to that news, apparently um, T. Higgins is not going to be hitting the open market. I know that was a big hope of a lot of Packer fans, which he was never going to hit here anyways. But uh, the idea for a lot of fans, that is, that um, that Higgins would be hitting the market because the Bengals wouldn't be able to essentially afford to um, pay him. But that's been a uh, rumor around the bend for quite a long time. But now that we've got actual GMs and whatnot doing interviews, Article by Ben Baby of ESPN. During his annual session at the NFL Scouting Combine, team executive Duke Tobin refuted any notion that the team could be interested in shopping the standout receiver this offseason. The, the team's longtime director of player personnel said teams haven't presented any offers, and if they did, trading Higgins wasn't a thought. Quote, if they want a receiver, go find your own. In my opinion, T. Higgins is a good piece for the Cincinnati Bengals. The trade stuff is a little ridiculous right now. And in reality, it's probably good news because every single really good player um, that is actually available, because most most good free agents don't actually hit the market, but some do. The Bears have more money than everybody and need more positions than everybody else. So any available top-tier free agent is an option for the Bears. And so far, every single target that they've had um, including, what was it, Deron Payne in Washington just got franchise tagged, so he's not going to Chicago. Elton Jenkins was guaranteed to be a Bear. He's not going to Chicago. T. Higgins was a major target for the Bears. The Bengals just said, no chance they're letting him walk. So it makes me laugh just because, again, Bears fans, for some reason, thought because they have $100 million to spend, that somehow was going to make them uh, a really good football team. Not if you can't turn that money into talent. You know, it's, it's kind of like um, when you go out flipping, you know, going out to yard sales and whatnot. I used to do that a lot, but in reverse. You know, if I go out and spend $5 on a $10 item, my 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 net worth went up, right? But it's kind of useless if I can't turn it back into actual money because I've got a board game in my garage. And if nobody wants to buy it, that's how it's going to stay. And eventually that $10 which was $5, is going to turn into $0 when I donate that stupid thing because nobody's willing to buy it. Same thing's going to happen to the Bears. They're going to end up just not spending that money, or they're just going to spend it stupidly. But there's only so much talent, and one by one, the pieces just keep dropping. Um, And then in addition to that, there was news recently about the Chicago Bears, everybody doing victory laps because the Bears apparently said um, that, or the, the, the rumor is that the number one pick is is available. Therefore, ha ha, you bunch of idiots, everybody, they love Justin Fields, they're going to keep him forever. Okay. First of all, that wasn't really, that was always the most likely option. However, I don't know that I would jump to those conclusions quite yet, just based on that note, the fact that they're putting the word out that they're willing to trade that piece. What does that actually mean to you? See, everybody's contention is if you want people to call you and, and make offers for that pick, you need to tell them you're not trading it. And I never understood that. Tell them you're going to stay there and pick a quarterback, and then everyone's going to rush to their phone and go, I'll give you this much. How about this for an idea? If you want to find out what people are actually willing to trade, if you want the maximum amount of phone calls, why don't you tell people you're willing to trade it? I think it's exactly opposite to tell everybody you're not interested. Because some teams then are not going to call you because you just told them you're picking a quarterback. No. How about this for a theory? They still are willing to trade Justin Fields. Again, I don't know that, but let's just let's just put this out there into the universe. But before they do that, they want to know how much they can get. In other words, they're willing to maybe keep them, but let's just make sure that we can get a haul. Why not? If somebody's willing to offer multiple first rounds, multiple second rounds, suddenly keeping Justin Fields and taking the picks doesn't seem like the worst option in the world. The bottom line is every responsible GM should be taking every single plausible offer that is available and listening to every single option that's available and then weighing those options. And the fact that they've made it clear that that pick is an option to somebody doesn't mean anything other than they're taking in information and weighing their best options. Again, I think they're going to trade the the pick away and I think they're going to end up drafting, I don't know, Bryce Young or something, or not Bryce Young, who's the other guy? I don't know. It, does, it doesn't matter. I'm not scared of any of them. Bryce Young's the quarterback. Will Anderson. Yeah, they'll get Will Anderson. Cool, great. 
But man, people hear one little maybe rumor that maybe somebody maybe heard from some fourth party person. And it's like, I know what's happening. I get it. I fully understand the situation. And just coincidentally, it confirms all my priors. Go figure. (laughs) Okay. Yes, the Bears are willing to listen to offers for the first pick. Why that would be it? In what scenario would that disprove anything? There is no scenario. Now, if they accept an offer, then we can start ruling stuff out. Drafting a quarterback seems extremely unlikely. Trading Justin Fields seems extremely unlikely. can probably rule those out. Until they accept an offer, let's just take it for what it is, and that is listening to offers. But all right, why don't we do this? Let's, um, I've got the interview here. Uh, Let's go through the interview. We'll take it point by point and uh, just kind of do it that way and see where that leaves us. First question here was obviously right out of the gate, and and, uh, about 50% of this at least is, is talking about Aaron Rodgers, which I don't think anyone is. A huge issue with, because that's what we want to know about anyways. Um, actually, would like to know a little bit about the draft, but basically right out of the gate, give me an update on the uh, Aaron Rodgers situation. Let me turn the volume up. Here we go. The Rodgers situation. Yeah, r- really no updates. You know, again, I think, uh, like I was talking earlier, um, haven't had the conversations that we need to have yet, so really, really no update. Um, but- so one of the things, because whenever I see things on Twitter, I make a lot of assumptions. And um, then you see somebody phrase it a little bit differently, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's an important distinction there. And so I want to try to pick out those important distinctions and make sure that we're very clear about things. The way in which he says things, I I want to just be very careful about. Um, He said, my, my, my first thought about this was, they haven't had a single conversation, and therefore... You know, I don't know. That's kind of weird to me. But specifically what he said is we haven't had the conversation that we need to have yet. Now, again, he probably just means we haven't had any conversations whatsoever. I have not spoken to him. I haven't talked to him. But just to be clear, he specifically said we have not had the conversations that we need to have yet. So really, really no update. Um, But looking forward here to being in D and and, and look at these prospects and trying to help this football team. The other thing that's funny, and this happens all the time, especially around this time, immediate deflection. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I don't know, we haven't had those conversations yet, but uh, excited to talk about the draft, excited about some prospects and whatnot. Anyways, about Aaron Rodgers, yeah, 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 no, no, he's uh, he's cool and all. So yeah, have you guys checked out uh, Michael Mayer? That dude's crazy, huh? Freaking uh, big dude or something, I hear. Look forward to meeting him. Who initiates when those conversations will take place with Aaron? Yeah, there's been some contact back and forth. Um, obviously, he's, he's had some things on his plate, uh, but hopefully those things will happen soon. So again, to be clear, there has been contact, there has been conversations, but not those conversations, or at least not the kinds of conversations that they need to have, right? So now maybe that's just texting back, like, hey, how'd it go? Good. Yeah, man, uh, let me know when you get back in town. We'll talk. Okay, cool. Like that, that could be all it is. Or maybe they have opened up communications. And, and the part of the reason I want to bring this distinction up and be very clear is because, number one, when I misremember certain things, then narrative starts to take over and you start going in these directions. Like, well, they haven't even talked yet, right? Well, let's be very clear about that. They have talked and we don't know what about, but they haven't had the right kinds of conversations to be able to give an answer to the media. That's all we know. And part of the reason that's important is because one of the scenarios I had highlighted, one is he's decided to retire, two is he's decided to come back to Green Bay and play for the Packers, three is he wants to be traded. Now, one of these things I think we would potentially know by now. Let's just assume it. This is a hypothetical where he knows the scenario. If it was retirement, I think we'd know. Now, I had mentioned if he wanted to come back, I think we'd know, but I don't know that that's necessarily the case, and we'll get into more detail on that moving forward, but... It's possible Rodgers came back, contacted Goot, was like, hey, I'd like to come back. And it's kind of like, all right, well, then we got to work through some, like, we got to have some conversations. We got to talk about some stuff. And there's some interesting comments coming up that I want to address in that regard. But that's entirely possible. He has said, I would like to move in the direction of coming back. And Goot's like, all right, well, let's pump the brakes. Let's, Let's talk about the things that need to happen in order for that to be an option. And then the third would be a trade, which again is, I'd like to play, but I don't know, you know, I don't know how he'd phrase it. I want to be traded. I doubt it. You know, maybe they're kind of playing uh, 
which a lot of people are assuming that this whole thing is is like two people that don't know how to break up with each other, but kind of like, yeah, I want to come back, but I don't know, maybe we should figure out something uh, kind of to do, you know, and Goot's like, yeah, we'll have to think of a plan of something. But the point is that there is a scenario, just to be very clear, and I don't know this, but there is a scenario in which they've had conversations and those conversations may essentially be a situation where Gutekunst and Rogers know what's going to happen, but they have to work out the details. Do you want him back as the quarterback of the Packers? Yeah, I think you know th- those discussions have to happen and making sure that it's the right fit. But um, obviously, we know the kind of player that Aaron is, and um, you know, once we had those conversations, we'll, we'll be able to move forward. With him. So this is this is exactly why I was glad that twelve sixty five fan called and talked about how remember what he was talking about after the end of the season, and I had forgotten. And um, I was like, oh, shoot, you're right. He was kind of doing that, wasn't he? And the the whole reason that was interesting is because what I was saying essentially was all we've ever heard is I want him back. I want him back. I definitely want him back. No question, nothing. And that he wouldn't do that if he didn't want him back. There's all kinds of ways that you can obfuscate and kind of say nothing statements or whatever to make it kind of sound complimentary. But this is exactly that. First of all, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. Okay. Second of all, he's a great player. Well, that's not the question, is it? Right? So, I mean, he's very much... It it, it works in the exact opposite. Like, if, if you don't want him here, why would you say we absolutely want him here? But it works the exact opposite. If you want him back, why wouldn't you say it? Well, you would. We know because he did it for years. And now all of a sudden he doesn't want to say it. Interesting. Right? So... Um, again, this doesn't mean a hundred percent that he's not coming back. We got to see about, you know, if Rogers, in other words, my, my biggest question mark is what happens. I I used to have two really big question marks. Do the Packers still really want him back, which would shock me. But at the same time, in my recollection, all I remember is them saying, we definitely need him back. We want him back. We got to have him back. It's, it's like desperation time, which I no longer see, see as a, as an obstacle. But then number two, what does happen if Rogers says, I'd like to come back and be with the Packers? I don't know exactly how that pans out. But I don't take it as a minor thing that Brian Gutekunst isn't able to do what he's been doing for years, which is simply to say, of course we want him back. That's been his answer for years. Of course we want him back. Why would we not want him back? He's a back-to-back MVP. He's a Hall of Famer. Of course we want Aaron Rodgers back. Now he's saying, yeah, I don't know, we got to talk about it, but, uh, you know, he's a good football player and whatnot, but we'll see. The, uh, you sat down there at the end of the season. What was that talk like after the last season? It was a great conversation. It was really just about the season and kind of the things that uh, that happened that uh, went right, went wrong, and um, just more more about the season than it was anything moving forward. And that's somewhat relevant. I don't know if you heard the question, but what did you talk about after the season? Because I had wondered if they kind of had an idea of where things were headed, and maybe they do, because... It was a long conversation. He was there for like a full day, basically sitting down. So I'm sure there's a little bit more than he's letting on. But again, I'm I'm just trying to put the pieces together. Do they know more than they're letting on? I'm sure Gutekunst has, you know, where I'm looking at it, like 33, 33, 33 or whatever. I I have no idea what's about to happen. I'm sure he's looking at it 80, 10, 10, but we just don't know what the 80 is. At least I don't know what the 80 is. But um, certainly moving in that direction, because again, and and this had happened just a day or two prior to this because of, again, uh, 1265 fan on uh, Packernet After Dark reminding me. But um, this was a big obstacle for me, was the the GM not doing exactly what he just did. And the fact that he just did it to me, and, and did it earlier as well, um, moves the needle kind of a lot for me. After you, the uh, season when you had your press conference, I think it was 18, the first 18 questions were about Aaron or the quarterback position. Today, I think it's 22 of these <laughs> folks, and here we are talking about the same thing. Do you have fatigue about this in the offseason, the quarterback situation? No, I think it's, it's part of my job, you know, so, and this is obviously a big topic that uh, our fans and, and people want to know about. So He's lying. So it's uh, <laughs> it really, you know. At the same time, certainly there will be other discussions we'd love to have, but um, it, it doesn't fatigue me. It's just um, uh, it's been pretty constant for a long time now. As you go through- now, I want to pause on that for a second. And again, I don't want to read too much, but I also don't want to skip over everything. The way he ended that 
you know, it's, it's all very jovial and lighthearted. Like, no, this is what the people want to know. You know, it's, it's fine. But he's the one that brought up that this has been constant for a long time now. It's very clear that to some degree, he's tired of this. Not that that is going to fully impact his decision moving forward or how he plays this moving forward. Or even what his opinion of, is of Aaron Rodgers or whether he wants him back. Because that's a separate discussion. However, this is part of the, 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 I'll call it baggage. Not that it's Aaron Rodgers' fault, but it is part of the Aaron Rodgers' baggage. When he stays, this is Gutekunst's job. And he doesn't like it. Through the calculus of this decision, uh, the two factors of last season being disappointing and Jordan being, as in your words, ready to play, how much do those two things weigh into your... Now, before he even answers... I think most Packer fans would look at that and say that is 99% of the equation. That's 99% of everything you need to know. With Aaron Rodgers, we sucked. And Jordan Love looked good. When you add in Rodgers' age, all the other stuff that comes along with it, and the contract, I don't know what else you need to know. But anyways, that's, that's just... Uh, <laughs> just throw that in there. Because, and, and part of the reason is because I'm looking dead at Brian Gutekunst saying, don't you dare act like that doesn't mean anything to you. I think everything's a part of it, you know. Um, I think we're constantly evaluating where we are as a football team. And what's- now, again, I, I, I'm interrupting a lot, and I should let it play. But every single time when he answers a question, I try to answer it for him, but depending on which situation I'm in. And I want to go back to the 2021 Green Bay Packers. You know, Rodgers is being a massive diva, throwing Gouda under the bus, all this stuff. And it's just, we need him back. We want him back. He's not going anywhere. All this stuff. If for one second a comment was made, and this, this is, by the way, even true during the season when people try to throw Rodgers under the bus. I've mentioned this a thousand times. Although Gutekunst was never to the degree that that... Matt LaFleur was. Matt LaFleur was always gushing over Rodgers. Uh, Gutekunst was somewhat, but more or less seemed to be biting his tongue a little bit. But um, if you go back to that version of the Green Bay Packers, that 100,000%, we want him back. He's not going anywhere. We're not. He's under contract. That's the bottom line. This question would be cast aside. No, I don't think so. You know, there were a lot of factors that came into last season that led to the the situation like that. I it, 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 it wasn't a, a byproduct of Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is an MVP, Hall of Fame, top-of-the-line guy. You know, we, we really like Jordan and everything he's done for this team. No question about it. He's ready to play. But no, I don't, I, I don't think that impacts our decision at all. The fact that he opens it up, because understand what the question is. Does the fact that you sucked last year and Jordan looked good impact your decision to move on from Rodgers? And his answer was what? He didn't phrase it that way, but that's be very clear. That's what the question was. His, his answer was, yeah, I mean, it all kind of factors in. He didn't dismiss any of it. He didn't, he didn't pump the brakes on the question like, I think that's an unfair characterization. Which, by the way, he used to do that. It's not just a Rodgers thing. He used to do that with Jordan, too. They would constantly downplay Jordan, which would annoy me to no end. Which, I mean, maybe was warranted. I mean, Jordan didn't show anything, but it was weird that they constantly, you know, with Rodgers, it was, oh, mighty Rodgers. And with Jordan, it was like, yeah, you know, I mean, he's got to work on some stuff. He's, he's got a ways to go. But now it's... All of a sudden, like, hey, uh, so you guys sucked with Rodgers and Jordan looked like a superhero. Does that impact your decision? He's like, yeah, you know, it all kind of factors in. Like, well, well, (laughs) that that was bait, dude. (laughs) You just took that hook, line, and sinker. You were supposed to tell me to F off. I don't know what's going on here. So, again, just just right out of the gate, when I hear him not immediately shoot it down and say, no, 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 no. That's not how that worked. It does not impact our decision. Rodgers is the man. We got to do a better job supporting him. And we have high confidence in his ability to lead this team when we can kind of get everything else up and running. That's the answer. Best for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, those are daily conversations. So, um, again, um, we'll move forward and have conversations um, as we go. And, and there'll be a point, obviously, yeah, you know, here soon where we're going to have to make some decisions and move forward. And again, he, he had every opportunity, even toward the end there, to kind of come back around at the end and say, you know, yeah, it all, it all factors in, but we have a lot of confidence in Aaron Rodgers and what he can do for our team. He hasn't said that once. Now, I, if he gets asked that directly, I would expect him to be able to say that. Um, he did say that he's a, a good football player. 
but he didn't tie it into a good football player for the Packers. He just said he's a good football player. It's a big difference to say, we still believe Aaron Rodgers can play at a high level, because obviously, because we're going to trade him and ask for a ton of money, and saying we have the highest confidence that Rodgers can come, uh, you know, we'd like Rodgers to come back and play at a high level for us, or we believe that he will do that or anything like that. The whole thing has been, yeah, we got to talk about it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, he's 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 good. And But Jordan's like real good and everything too. So I don't know. It's crazy. Is Jordan? Go ahead. How does uh, the, the weighing out of the decision from Aaron, how does it affect your process and kind of maybe delay you and how, I guess, how do you uh, kind of rationalize that? You know, it's really, we're going forward as usual. You know, we've gone through our free agency meetings or our draft process. Um, so we're, we're, you know, continuing to move forward, evaluating and getting ready to build you know, this football team. And, um, so really, I don't think it's, um, it's really any different than, than any other year. Is this a hypothetical or is Jordan Love ready to be? An- I guess I, I was going to stop and take a break, but let's just, no, you know what? Let's take a break. That'll be the teaser <laughs> before we get into the Jordan Love thing. Uh, we're at the 30 minute mark, so we might as well take a break here. Um, and then we'll hear what he had to say about Jordan Love and get to the rest of this interview. But uh, as always, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy is how you can support the podcast. I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing that. You can do so for as little as $1 per month. Um, Venmo, if you'd rather do that, you can go over to Venmo. It's Packernet Podcast. By the way, thank you so much to Henry for jumping in on Patreon. Really appreciate that. Um, Appreciate your support. And uh, also, please consider giving to Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry. You can find more about them at FertileGroundRanch.org. Or if you want more information, reach out to me or reach out to them, and um, we'll get it figured out. But we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. It's only a kick, a jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. All right, so so for the for the sake of me not having to rewind, the question is in regard to Jordan Love, and um, we'll get the rest of the question and answer. An NFL starting quarterback. Yeah, I think he's ready to play, and I think he's ready to be an NFL. Now, again with the pausing, I get it, but do you understand what I'm saying now? Do you get what I'm saying in terms of this is how they used to respond about Aaron Rodgers? The the he could barely get the question out of his mouth before Gutekunst jumped out. He couldn't wait to do that. And I, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit excited about it because I was worried about the desperation they had for Rodgers in the past. This is the kind of desperation I heard from them. The the gushing and the just, oh my goodness, he's amazing. He's this, that, 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 that
And we didn't get it for Jordan Love, and now all of a sudden we're hearing it for Jordan, and I think that's a good thing because I think there is a level of desperation, or at least I want there to be, I think there should be, because I'm worried about losing them. By the way, and this is topic for, it's another topic I like to discuss at length, but uh, in the event of me forgetting, I think it's important that we franchise them. And um, the biggest reason for that. There's a lot of teams right now that are that are sitting with quarterbacks that are looking at a lot. Uh, did I say franchise? I meant fifth year option. Uh, there's a lot of uh, teams that are dealing with quarterbacks that they're going to end up having to franchise, and it's kind of a mess. And it's this whole thing. You would hate to have one good year of Jordan Love, and then we get into this big mess about contract disputes and is he going to want to walk out and this and that and yeah. Just just do the fifth year option thing. Okay, let's just get that settled, and then we can work out a contract extension in comfort without having to worry about franchise tagging him or anything like that. You just give him the big money contract. Let's just do it, okay? Let's get that fifth-year option taken care of. But but again, anyways, the urgency and and just the, the not the obfuscation like you're hearing with every Rodgers question where it's kind of, yeah, you know, we got to kind of do this and sort of kind of maybe a little bit this, that, or the other. It's just boom. Here's the answer. Here's that again, real quick. Or is Jordan Love ready to be an NFL starting quarterback? Yeah, I think he's ready to play, and I think he's ready to be an NFL starting quarterback. Um, he's he's worked really hard. He's shown a lot of progression. Uh, I know he's really eager uh, to have that, and I think that's the next step in his progression is is to play. So again, no questions there. Um, and 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 this that isn't necessarily even me saying, dude, he's going to be a stud. Listen to Gutekunst. Listen to the confidence. I think that's good. But I think this is how you treat your starting quarterback. And when Aaron Rodgers was the starting quarterback, this is how he talks about Aaron Rodgers. And Jordan Love was kind of meh, meh, meh. Which again, is kind of annoying and short-sighted or whatever, but that's just how it felt. Now, I think in Gutekunst's mind, it feels like Jordan Love is the guy. And I think in his mind, he's going to try to get Rodgers gone, gone. I know this sounds like a 180 on this podcast, but I'm just telling you how it feels. I don't know how it all materializes, but this is the feeling I'm getting. I'm just I'm just telling you what it feels like is happening as I listen to it. And now Jordan's the guy you're going to have these contract talks with. Now Jordan's the guy you're going to have to sit down and try to get this fifth year option with and all this stuff, right? So it's just different. Do you have like on your legal pad two scenarios? One of them is back, this, and then we keep these guys. Or one is not, we make different decisions. No, I don't think so. I think um, I mean obviously. Um, you know, he's a big part. If he comes back, he's a big part of what we're doing. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that will really change um, the roster much. So um, kind of split on this this answer to this question in terms of, you know, does, does Rodgers coming back change that? On one hand, I think it's just the right answer no matter what, right? Like I said, they, they, their hands are kind of tied in terms of what they have to do, what they need to do, these kinds of things. But at the same time, there is sort of a telegraphing there because they have kind of bent over backwards, right? Randall Cobb would never have been on this team if it wasn't for Rodgers. So moving forward, Gutekunst saying Rodgers coming back makes no difference on how we're going to construct our team. Maybe it's because they don't really have a lot of options, and I'm sure I'm positive he's made that clear to Rodgers, um, partially because I think he's trying to make it clear that he wants to move on, um, but also just because that's the reality, and it would make sense to be honest with him regardless. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's the honest answer, but I also think it's the answer that Rodgers doesn't want to hear, and I think Gutekunst is all too uh, willing to get that message out there that, um, you know, Rodgers, obviously, if he comes back, plays a major part of this team, but he will not play a major part in the roster construction moving forward. Do you get into speculation or conjecture about just even his desire to keep playing? So many people do. How do you just accept that or process yeah, that? Uh, I, re- I really take our conversations and what, what he gives me, you know, from him, you know, as, as I don't really uh, try to speculate too much. Um, I know it's, it's a big topic out there, but for me, it's when we have our discussions, um, I kind of take that for what it is and, and, and don't go too far beyond that. With uh, Matt and the coaching staff now here, how is it different? Um, I think really I was, I was touching on it earlier. I think the um, the biggest thing is just the informal interviews. Everything else pretty much remains the same. Our coaches handled a lot of the informal interviews. 
um, down in what it's kind of a pit area where all the teams are, are together. We have 45 formal interviews uh, that stay the same, uh, but the informal interviews is what the assistant coaches really handled. They will do those by Zoom now, um, and our, um, our scouting staff has been down in the informal area uh, meeting with players. So in some ways, we're actually able to accomplish more, um, you know, touch points with these players. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's different, but it's something we've talked about a little bit since 2020 when COVID was here. We really didn't have the, the same structure. And this is, this is, I talked about this, I think, yesterday. This is exactly what I was saying made the most sense to me. The coaches don't need to be there to watch guys run in shorts, right? Just tell me what the time is, right? And if I have any disputes about it, which I don't, there's never going to be a coach that's like, I want to see it myself. I want to time it myself. That's wildly disrespectful to the 40 scouting personnel that are there doing the times and getting all the data. The only thing you would need them there for is the interviews. And again, you could set up a Zoom session, which is what he just said they're going to do. They're going to have Zoom sessions. So I don't see any reason why the coaching staff would necessarily need to be there. I understand there might be some prospects they really like and would want to see, but there's going to be plenty of film and tape and everything else that they can watch and ask questions of the scouts. And um, if they have any further questions, there's always the interviews and, and the ability to bring guys into the stadium and work them out and all that stuff that they can do. And if they ever find out that it was a mistake because we ended up having to bring guys in because the coaches wanted to get their hands on guys, um, which we wouldn't have had to if they were there, then maybe they'll tweak it. But I don't think so. I think this just makes the most sense. And um, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't see why, uh, why they would need to be there. You haven't come off many losing seasons in your time with the Green Bay Packers. What is it like to do that, and how quickly do you switch to, all right, we're, we're moving ahead? Yeah, I mean, I think regardless of the, the outcome of the season, you know, we switched pretty quick into, into moving forward. Um, certainly last season was frustrating. It wasn't what we all um, anticipated or wanted. Um, but um, every year, no matter the, the outcome, um, we move pretty quickly into the, into the next season and moving forward. Can just say that as a podcaster, I try to do the same thing. So me and me and Gutekunst are on the same wavelength there. But no, I mean, it it it, it might sound like a BS answer, but it makes the most sense. What? Why? Why would you spend any time reliving it? I mean, th- there's there's data you're going to need to gather from the past to be able to move into the future. But you're you're 100 building your 2023 team and whatever that looks like from the coaching staff to the roster to the scheme and the schematics, to, to everything else. It's all about 2023. And if you have to dig back last year to kind of get a couple data points to help you moving forward, fine. But it, it um, I think we get hung up on these guys being fans a little bit too much. I mean, of course, there's emotional investment, but this guy has a job to do, and his job changed completely the, d- the day that that game ended. It was it was a hundred percent twenty twenty three at that moment. How active can you be in free agency? I think we're going to go through our normal process. Um, you know, our resources aren't um, like some other teams, but um, we do feel that if there's areas you know to improve the team and opportunities arise, we'll be ready. Again, not a not a big shock to anybody. The only key point I'd like to bring up is um, you know the the idea that nothing that was done in the past has any impact on the future is ridiculous. The fact that we never have any money is exactly that, that scenario, you know, regardless of the player you look at, you know, Kenny Clark and how much money he costs. The reason he costs so much is because we deflated his contract earlier so that we had more money to pack more talent in so we could try to win then. So now we're paying for it. We're, we're, when you look at Kenny's contract and it says 2023 cap hit, that's somewhat untrue. It should say 2023 cap hit and then show like $15 million or something and then show how much of that is 2022 and how much of that is 2021 that got pushed into this um, this this season. So, um, you know, I, I again, just to be very clear, because there's a lot of people that want to believe that we can just restructure and do all this stuff and look, oh, money vanished and everything's fine now. We don't have to worry about it. It's not true. It's never been true. And we have no money this year. We had no money last year. We're not going to have any money next year. I mean, unless we move on from Rodgers and take the full cap hit this year. Um, But in every year that we do this, it's going to be the same result. So there's the quick and painful way. And there's the long, slow bleed way that we can continue this process. And it's, I mean, it's not the end of the world. The, The only difference is those big name free agents don't come here. 
you're not getting the Zadarius Smiths. You're you're getting the uh, the lower price guys. And hey, at least Gutekunst has done a good job with that. And we still get all our draft picks, so that's not really changed. So we can still be a good football team. But um, if you're somebody that wants those bigs, and and I think that's the thing that annoys me the most because I think there's a lot of overlap between the people that want to restructure and free up a ton of money um, that are the exact same people that want to go out and make a bunch of big swings like last year. Why aren't we going out and getting all the big name people? Because we're broke, dude. Because he did what you wanted him to do. But of course, Gutekunst gets no credit for doing exactly what they wanted. Um, instead, he's skewered for not doing what I want this year. But he can't do what you want this year because he did what you want last year, which was stupid and failed. So just so we're very clear on that. Restructuring a guy like Aaron Jones, how does having him in the backfield kind of help no matter who your yeah. quarterback is, but especially if you have a young quarterback? Yeah, I mean, Aaron is such a dynamic football player. Um, you know, having him back there, not only in the run game, but in the, in the pass game as well. Uh, his experience and explosiveness um, just, I think, you know, puts, you know, puts our team in the best you know, spot to take advantage of, of his skills. Again, he could have said this about Aaron Rodgers. He said Aaron, and my ears perked up for a perked up for a moment, like, oh, he is talking about nope, Aaron Jones. He could have said this exact same thing, but you know, didn't. And I just think um, you know, we were really appreciative of being able to keep him around. You referenced a lot of unknowns at this point for you. How are you budgeting your time here this week? What's kind of on your priority list? Yeah, I mean early early on here, it's you know, some of the this media stuff. We had some interviews last night, which were, were went really well. It's always really good. To sit face to face with these guys and get to know them. So these first few days, it's really more about the interviews and, and talk to talk to some agents. Um, and then once we get into the on field portion, it's obviously where I want to be most of the time and uh, what I'm looking forward to. So um, the biggest thing that we get out of this, obviously, is the medical. Um, but um, the on field stuff and the, and the meeting the players is, is really how I spend my time this week. When you get to a week like this, do you kind of look at? I want to look at this group of guys or this set of guys, or do you just kind of want to see everybody you can? I'd like to see everybody I can, but we've we've just got through you know a little over two weeks of draft meetings, so um, you know there are certain things that come out of those meetings that kind of focus us in certain areas, certain players. Um, when we come out of those meetings, we kind of I just I just have to say. The fact that they know who they really like and are super excited about guys right now, I want so desperately to know who that I would I would kill. Maybe, maybe not literally, not a person. I would kill though. Um, to be in those meetings and to just hear and to just I just want to see these guys light up. You know, I want to see Gudekunst watch somebody and be like, dude, this guy'd be a freaking monster for us. You know, and then and then you know, they go and they watch all these workouts. And it's, it's actually kind of fun when you go back. I was I played that clip on the podcast of Jordan Love, and they showed some of the stuff. And it was funny because they showed his workout at the Combine. And the funny thing is, in hindsight, you know that Gutekunst is there and a bunch of other guys are there, and they're watching him like a hawk. And you know their radars are up. And they, they got to play it cool, but they're watching him like this could be the guy. And it's cool in hindsight to know that. And the fact that there's those guys right now and and they're going to tweak that they're going to go over some stuff they got they got some more stuff to do but they've got some targets right now they've got some guys that they are in love with and really want to be green bay packers and they need to see what they're going to look like out there in shorts and running around and catching passes and and whatever else kind of exercises they're doing um i would just love to know who those guys are and i'm i'm a little sad that i don't know who they are (laughs) Kind of have an idea of what we need. We, we maybe we don't have the whole picture on certain players, so we're trying to to finish that uh, while we're here. It doesn't always happen, um, but that's kind of you know the, our process is like there's some unanswered questions we might need to answer. If we can get them answered here, we'd certainly like to, to be able to do that. Defensively, when you lost your Sean Gary, how much did that hurt your pass rush? And then on the secondary, why you know you lost Jerry Gray as a secondary coach? Mm-hmm. Talk about the changes on defense that way. Yeah, certainly with Rashawn, I think whenever you lose a player of that caliber, especially a pass rusher, it changes kind of how you're going to do things on defense. I thought the staff and the team did a nice job of kind of just adjusting and doing different things, but it does. It takes it takes uh, um, some stress. A some... couple points, not necessarily about what he's saying, but just kind of occurred to me right now. Number one, losing Rashawn might focus them a little bit in terms of the urgency to go out and get a pass rusher. That's number one. Um, but then number two... Oh, I'm going to forget it, aren't I? The um, I, I think something to consider is, 
I, I'm 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 curious because the defense, in my estimation, it's not even really an estimate. The defense did get better, but one of the things they did is they focused eventually a little bit more on coverage, and by focusing on coverage, it gave the pass rushers more time. And in, as a, as a weird byproduct. By investing less in the front, and I, I just mean in terms of like bringing extra p- pass rushers or anything like that, by investing less in the front and in pass rush, they actually improved their pass rush. My concern is that when Rashawn comes back, they're going to kind of revert back to how it used to be where pass rush is our focus. It doesn't really make any sense. I'm, ju- I'm just trying to wonder because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm all excited because it's like, oh man, they figured it out. Like they got the defense kind of dialed in a little bit better. And now as I'm sitting here, I'm like, I hope they don't get Rashawn back. And like, all right, let's go back to the old way. Like, no, 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 no. You got to like, just add Rashawn to the mix. It's perfect. Focus on coverage. Rashawn is, which I think they were kind of doing anyways, when you got a guy like Rashawn. And here's the other thing. You get another pass rusher or even defensive lineman, if you want to go that way or whatever, you can absolutely stick to that formula. Four man rush or five man or whatever it is, and then emphasize coverage drop everybody else. Why not? You got the pass rushers to get it done. And you got the corners to be able to lock it down for a long period of time. But you get Rashawn and then Rashawn 2.0 and then Kenny and then an evolved Wyatt, which by the way, hopefully will improve Kenny back to the days when we had Mike Daniels. And all of a sudden we got this great front and we don't need any more pass rushers except those four, except, you know, Preston's there because why not? And then you drop everybody like that's, you know, pass rusher is not... It's not the most exciting thing, but when you think about it in terms of how it impacts the defense as a whole, I don't hate it. Yes, we need a safety, that's true. Or we just throw a bunch of bodies in the secondary and make sure that we got some killers up on the front. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever you want to do. I'm kind of talking myself into finding an edge rusher. I might have to dig back into that. I'm I'm, I'm pretty convinced that Tyree Wilson is long gone, Um, but, you know, Maybe not, and then there's always Murphy or whatever else. I don't know. I'll I'll have to take a second gander at that. Thought we did a nice job of of um, making up for that, but you can't replace a guy like Rashawn Gary when he goes out. Um, you know, uh, tough to see good coaches like Jerry Gary go. Um, a good opportunity for him in Atlanta, um, but um, but really confident in our staff and Matt and how he goes about that to, to replace that. And um, um, sometimes you know, when you get you know, new blood and, and new ideas and, and different people in the building. Too. A couple more guys. Brian, aside from the quarterback position, whoever is your starting quarterback, who are the leaders on this team? Do you, do you look at some of those guys and who would they be in that group? Yeah, I think, you know, every year there's opportunity for leaders to emerge. Great you know, question. I think we have some young players that uh, um, are really stepping into that. You know, offensively, you got guys like, you know, Elton Jenkins. You know. I'm excited to hear this answer, by the way. The fact that he, I'll just let him in, I'll let him finish. Stepping into that role. Uh, Aaron Jones has been a leader for us, but I think you know that'll grow. You know, as 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 um, kept this Aaron comes around. Um, Signed so Elton. There's always opportunities. So defensively, Jair Alexander, I think, is a guy that paid Jair. You know, he's kind of into that second contract, and he's a veteran player. Um, and I think there's opportunity for him to grow as a leader. Um, you know, Devondre Campbell and Coy Walker, those two inside backers. That's always an important part for those guys to lead. So, Kenny Clark as well. So I think there's Devondre. opportunities. Uh, every year's a different year, and new leaders step. up. It's exceptionally important, and uh, I think Matt and his staff do a really good job of kind of fostering an environment for for those guys to step up. Eh. All right, so um, that was the end of that. The reason I kind of like that is because what what is what has been my theory about the locker room, more or less? Not that I know, but just vibe wise, I don't like the old guard leadership thing where you've got Rodgers and Cobb and these guys that kind of just run things like a business and um, say that this is the way it is and you guys need, you suckers need to man up and be really good like me. It's not about energy. It's not about excitement. It's not about, you know, rah, rah. We're not popping champagne bottles and blasting music in the locker room, but we are, we are a precise, sophisticated unit. Everybody he listed are guys that I wanted to hear. I've been talking about Jair. He has got the exact kind of energy that I want. I just don't see anybody following his lead. I feel like it's him getting jacked up and getting excited and kind of being on his own. And he, he, you know, he tries to foster that with his guys. He and Stokes do it. And Kevin King, when he was here, and I think Savage is kind of in that unit. And they're like these young, fast, physical, wild, crazy. Like, that's what I want 
more of. It's good to hear Elton. I don't know anything about Elton. Seems to be kind of a quiet guy, but but that's 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 what I've been saying. I want more of that young, youthful, energetic leadership style in the locker room and less of this sort of like just calm down, junior. Do your job or, you know, just shut your mouth and do your job kind of a thing. By the way, and I understand you know, maybe Rodgers isn't going to be here, but he could have thrown Rodgers in there as a leader. He, he didn't even mention him. He's still under contract as a Green Bay Packer. I don't know. I mean, it would make sense, especially if you want him back to say, of course, Aaron Rodgers is a leader for our team, has been for many years. He sets the standard for leadership. Um, but we've got some younger guys that are that are starting to emulate him. We've had some great leaders like Randall Cobb over the years and Alan Lazard. No, no, no. Lazard is gone. Randall's gone. Rodgers is gone. Who are the guys that he highlighted? People that he paid. Kenny Clark got paid. Jair got paid. Devondre got paid. Elton got paid. He's paying the guys that are these young, energetic studs that are stepping up and putting in the work. And the guys that aren't, he's not talking about, he's not paying, and potentially, he's not bringing back. And I, again, I'm just, I'm just happy to hear it because I've been frustrated that the team has moved in a direction that I didn't like. But there's always been this this potential reality in which the team has been kind of held hostage in that direction. You know, we we we, it, we don't keep Rodgers around because we like that sort of locker room dynamic or we like the leadership style. It's because he's Aaron freaking Rodgers. But when Aaron Rodgers becomes not Aaron freaking Rodgers anymore, suddenly it's like, all right, cool. I'll see you later. Take this contract and get the heck out of here. Take that leadership style and get out of here. Get that like old guy vibe out of here. Now, there's nothing wrong with a veteran. And, 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 and that's what I've said before, too. There, there are some teams that need a veteran leader. There are other teams that need a little bit more youthfulness. I think the Packers need more youthfulness. The Jets, they, they might need an Aaron Rodgers to come in there and show them what it takes to be, a, to, to be a, uh, a professional and all that kind of stuff. That's important. I think the Packers got it. That's all they get. They need some young guys to feel the ability to step up and get wild and get crazy and have fun and just go in and just just be loud and proud and um, go win some freaking football games. And I, I here's the other thing. I don't know how this is all going to pan out, but if Jordan Love does take over, I think these guys are going to rally behind him real hard. Because with, Aaron, with Jordan Love, did I say Jordan Love? If Jordan Love takes over? With Jordan Love is sort of a freedom to actually be that player-led team. Because remember, the the locker room might have been quote-unquote player-led insofar as it was Aaron Rodgers-led, and he's a player. But I don't think everybody in that locker room felt like they had a voice. And I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers necessarily even did anything wrong, but when you have a person that is of that magnitude in the locker room, how can you ever feel like you have the ability to step up and say, I'm going to take control? No, you can't. You're a little peon. I mean, look what happened when Jair said something. Aaron Rodgers smacked them down for it. Aaron Rodgers may have been right, but the bottom line is you got to get in line. But with Aaron Rodgers out of the way, there's a little bit more equality. There's some guys that got paid, and there's some guys that are bigger stars and all that kind of stuff. But it can I genuinely believe it can actually be a player, as in all the players leading this thing in the way that they want to lead this thing. I don't think it's a player-led locker room. I think it's an Aaron Rodgers led locker room. And 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 again, I'm I'm sure Rodgers does it the right way based on how everything's supposed to be, but that's the point. Everything is by the book. Everything is and everybody else needs to shut their mouth and do it by the book and learn to be a professional like Rodgers and Randall and all that stuff and and your job is to learn to be like Randall Cobb and your job is to learn to be like Rodgers and your job is to learn to be like Mercedes. There are positives and negatives with everything. There are a lot of teams that are nothing but young guys and they're just wild and reckless and they suck. And they need a little bit of rock. I think we need a little bit of youthfulness here. You need that balance. And I think we're going to get a little bit more balance if Rodgers doesn't come back, which he may. I'm not trying to make you any promises. I don't know what's going on. It, it, this is the strongest I've ever felt like Rodgers is not coming back. Now, there were some other comments made, and I don't know if these were um, separate. Well, I'll tell you what. These are different Brian Gutekunst interviews. There are some other really good nuggets, um, other really interesting details. Uh, regarding, for example, Mason and Bakhtiari and um, some other of those little um, interesting ways in which questions were answered or whatnot. But these are in different interviews, and it looks like we have them here. I see he did an interview one-on-one with The Rock, um, and then there's a a separate uh, interview that looks like it's more NFL-wide. So we'll go over those, I think, tomorrow. 
and just kind of leave it at this for today. But I'm feeling invigorated, man. I'm excited. I feel like we got actual news. We got the combine coming. We got the boys out there in Indy ready to put in some work and find us some more studs. We got a little bit, a little bit what feels like clarity on the Aaron Rodgers thing, although it's it's basically nothing. It doesn't feel like nothing. Um, just being able to hear the way in which these questions are being answered and whatnot, I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm 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 pumped to do tomorrow's podcast. <laughs> That's all I can say. But uh, anyways, you guys uh, have a good night, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.